we in, in the 21st century in Western culture tend to make certain assumptions when we're reading uh, documents from the ancient Near East that were not in place in the ancient Near East. For, for example, uh, if I quote somebody in the 21st century, that quote has to be word for word, letter for letter, identical to what the guy who I'm quoting said. That's our 21st century expectation. Not so in the ancient Near East literature. What was important is that what the idea, what the point was that the guy was getting across, that is vital to communicate. The exact wording is, is, is uh, flexible. So when we read, say, some quotes in the New Testament from the Old, you go back to the Old and say, wow, and there's no word for word quoting going here. What's going on? A little sloppy if you ask me. No, that's not at all required. What's required is that the idea is accurately transferred. Another Western mentality mistake we make that appears to uh, produce contradictions, but it shouldn't be, it's just an assumption, is that if, um, let's say if I'm giving a narrative, uh, I'm, I'm giving an, a, a recounting what I saw when I went uh, to town this afternoon. And uh, so I write it out and then I give it to somebody and then later on, uh, they find out that something else happened in town that I didn't mention. Well, they might think I'm being a little dishonest here, that I've left out something here that actually happened in town. You didn't tell the uh, whole truth. That's right. There was, a, was what's this? Was this missing? Or maybe, maybe, um, and uh, maybe I'm talking to a couple, a group of people in town, and I'm just having a conversation with the group, and there's one person in the group is sort of acting as the the spokesperson. And uh, then I, they, I get their decision or I get the point they're making. And then I come home and I say, I write one, I say to one person, oh, this group here said, there was a group of guys that said this. But I'm talking to another person and I say, Joe, who was the spokesperson, Joe said this. So then later on, somebody's looking at the two accounts and say, oh, a contradiction here. Here, it was a group of people. Here, it's only one person. And it's the same point, but it's a contradiction. But no, in ancient Near East uh, cases, in both of those examples I gave, it was only the important bits of the narrative that would be communicated. The stuff that the writer didn't wasn't really important for his or his point was not just simply not mentioned. But another writer might come along, and they might think that 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 thing is important for some particular point they want to make. And uh, then there's the case of the angels at the tomb. In one. One thing, it's so there's two angels at the tomb, and they say such and such. Another gospel is this that only mentions one angel who says such and such. So what's going on here? Was there one angel at the tomb or two? Well, our Western mentality, we're saying, okay, here's a contradiction, not with the ancient Near East. Ancient Near East would just assume, okay, there were two angels at the tomb, and one was doing the talking. And this is what the one doing the talking said. But another person will report it is this is what the two angels said, because the one doing the talking represents what both angels 